Um, one of the, um, like especially doing business here in the United States, one of the things you see is that most of small businesses that start, they start, but they, you know, they fail within the first couple of years, four or five years. Mm -hmm. And people, when you look at, when they look at those things, they have this panic about, mm -hmm. well, in that case, why would I want to try it? So should people use those uh, percentage of, you know, the number of people that are successful and that are not successful as a determinant for their, you know, f uh, future business? Uh, I mean, I'll take an example. I mean, uh, for the first time, uh, I follow McDonald's, for example. Yeah. For the first time, McDonald's start closing some of their shops. Uh, are you going to tell me they're failures? No. Maybe, you know, the product they created, the location they created, yeah. the demographic they had at that particular location was wrong because they yeah. were tro too aggressive against Wendy's and against the other fast food franchises. Yeah. They start opening up locations without doing the, the, the diligence they used to do when they started their company. So what happens? You know, McDonald's start shutting down stores for the first time. Yeah. So that shows you, like, do your demographic, do your study, and you should have a base. When you start a business, you will have a base saying, you know, if you started a bottled water company, you say, before I start a, uh, this bottled water company, are there you know, base clients I have just yeah. to pay my bills, you know, just to cover my, not to make money, none of that stuff, but to cover my base. Yeah. Once I do that, I'll launch into the business and then I'll add other customers and I'll use my customers to actually market my water for other people, give them commission, whatever. So that's the way you start your business. So failure, and business, it happens. 90% of the small businesses fail in the yeah. first couple of years. So, so what? Yeah. But the thing is, it's an idea that we have to actually uh, learn from. But the, one of the things our people do not do, I bet you every, every room I talk to, I go to their house, they are all kind of political magazines, yeah. whatever. How come there is no Business Week? How come there is no Forbes magazine? On the day? Because when you go there, you learn how other people felt. Yeah. From that, you might be able to learn how to actually become successful. Because we don't know it, and of course our kids are not gonna know it, because all we talk is about politics, who did this, who did that. Yeah. And that way, we do not know how to actually welcome failure and actually learn from it and grow. So I, I suggest you really educate yourself yeah. and uh, to overcome those fears. So um, the other thing, where would be a good mm -hmm. way to start to, uh, you know, when you want to do your business? Mm -hmm. It's like research-wise, um, of course, you know, everybody has have different ideas about business mm -hmm. or the kind of business they want to do. Generally, you know, there are places to go for that kind of business uh, information that you need. But generally, um, if somebody has a business idea, in, but you know, still stuck at the same place, basically going back to the earlier question, but expanding to that a little bit, where where would be a good way for what would be a good way for somebody to start uh, doing their research, and what would be a good way, uh, a good place to start? What a lot of people do not know. I mean, you, you'd be surprised how much. You know, you pay taxes, I pay taxes. So how much is government has so many services yeah. and we don't use it. One of the biggest services, the Small Business Administration, yeah. is said by the federal government, yeah. has so many ways to teach you um, how to research business. They will help you how to actually build businesses, how to build your business plans. Yeah. Those things are taught, they give classes for free. Yeah. In, the, in your neighborhood, in your communities, they have uh, these uh, uh, ideas where uh, they, they give uh, training uh, uh, job opportunities for people, how you create, how you get government contracts. All these are available in your local market. I don't care where you live, yeah. they have it locally. Plus, what makes it even good, better for us, yeah. is the min us being a minority. Yeah. You being a minority gives you another club that most of the people do not have here. But what do we do? We don't use it. What do we use? We use the food stamps, the, you know, the, you know, assistant, uh, you know, uh, affordable housing assistant. Yeah. But Okay, and that's wrong with that. But at the same time, there are some assistance the government gives you that actually could build your life for the future. Why don't you go use those uh, services? Yeah. So all those services are available. It doesn't cost you a dime. They're willing to help you. So uh, believe it or not, they have a quota, how many people they have to give a loan to, how much millions of dollars they have to lend out to. Nev they never uh, reach their quota. And it shows you there's plenty of money sitting around. Um, grants, whatever, yeah. just to do your business. So the availability for uh, knowledge, how to package your businesses, vastly available throughout the country. All right. 
right, now shifting our maybe topic a little bit from you know, how to get into business into um, the things that you do. Uh, obviously, you, you're into real estate, and uh, now you're actually expanding into as a market as well as starting a foundation called mm -hmm. the Oka Foundation. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about the Oka Foundation? Uh, basically, the Oka Foundation is a, f a foundation. Hopefully, we're going to launch um, the website in a couple of weeks. Uh, before we even launch the website, we've done so much stuff already um, to uh, uh, to create Oromo awareness among our culture, uh, how to bring us together to do businesses to get, uh, among Oromos, mm -hmm. and uh, education and uh, youth uh, youth involvement and actually human rights issues around um, uh, the Oromo suffering th throughout the world. So those are the things that o Olika Foundation is willing to do and is already doing uh, basically. Yeah. So actually we're uh, opening up an office in Minnesota. Uh, soon I'll announce the, the location. We're going to have a grand opening in, uh, in Minneapolis. Um, the foundation would be headquartered in Minneapolis yeah. and uh, basically that's what uh, the foundation is doing just to help Oromos uh, come together and be a productive citizens. I mean, that's th what that's one of my goals is to, to, to give back to my community as an individual. Um, you, you know, it's, 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 it's always it's never a bad thing to actually give back to the community. But what may what motivates you into getting into you know doing into uh, getting into doing this uh, uh, starting this foundation? I mean, is it is it uh, influence from other people or is it? Is this something you've been wanting to do for a long time, but never got a chance to get around it, and and now this opportunity came in. So, what what, what was the base? Uh, it's a good question. You know, I hear that sometimes uh, uh, people say, "Where did this guy come all of a sudden?" Whatever you know. Yeah. And uh, if you if you are around Atlanta or in some uh, some other areas. Um, I'm not new to uh, Oromo community or Oromo involvement. I was involved uh, when I was a busboy at the age of 16. I used to, you know, save my money up and send it to Oromo causes. So for me, uh, I make, you know, a bunch of money now and why should I change? Yeah. So I do more now because I'm able to, you know, to afford it. And the other reason that the foundation was uh, formed was what I was doing all this year for the last 10, 10, 12 years that I've been helping this Oromo communities. What I've been doing is actually writing a check and not participating in my knowledge, not participating, giving it a structure yeah. and not even asking what's happening to the money. But now I'm saying, you know, let me bring the expertise. Let me bring some people who actually teach us better and let me share my knowledge as well instead of just money. And in the process, it will have a structure whether I'm alive or dead, the foundation could continue to give to the Oromo communities around the world. So basically, that's one of the reasons of the foundation being created. So uh, if you ask me why I started it, I st started long ago, but yeah. it just became official for that man. So like you said, you, said, you used to actually write checks and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and now you actually get involved into it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, how much improvement had, or how much progress has been made uh, since you actually got into it yourself and, and you know, contributing contributing to the community personally instead of through a piece of paper. I mean, it's tremendous. A, piece of paper, a good piece of paper. <laughs> it's tremendous because yeah. uh, you'd be surprised, uh, uh, you know, the first thing we did, uh, you, you probably know, like th this past summer, yeah. um, we did the Oromo Community Center in Atlanta. Nice. We built it and uh, we donated it to the Oromo Community Center in, in, uh, in Atlanta. So what we did is, see, let's see what works, what does not work in Atlanta. Oromo Community Center and see how we can duplicate it in other cities. So now we have, uh, we, we're about to um, do another phase in Minneapolis and here in Portland in your state and yeah. uh, in Seattle and Denver, uh, even in Australia. So the idea was let's see what works and actually come to uh, fruition. So what's been happening is I've been getting calls from whatever Oromos live, you know. Yeah. They call me, how many Oromos do we have to be for you to come and help us out, or whatever. So uh, t the, uh, the changes I've seen so far is tremendous. Yeah. Uh, the communication I'm having from uh, people from Kenya, from Uganda, from South Africa, 
Oromos who are suffering, that Oromos are not even aware of here, oh, it's tremendous. So you're going to see more. Uh, I can almost guarantee you that we haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah. And my foundation is committed uh, totally to make more impact in our community.